Okay everyone, today I'm going to be using a microwave leak detector to actually check how much radiation is coming off your cell phone when you use it. So I have here a microwave leak detector and these you use for safety purposes in order to measure if there's any leaks in a microwave or any other source of microwaves in your house. So for example, let's go check my microwave oven. You can see right now the number kind of bouncing around. That's just the background microwave radiation or just noise of the detector. But let's see what it looks like when we actually put it close to my microwave. Okay, so let's start my microwave and see what the leak detector says. Let me put it on max, so this will give me the max reading. 1.36 now, move a little bit closer. Three point nine four. So right next to the door now, we're getting six milliwatts per centimeter squared. And if I go up near the cracks, we can check for any leaks here. So around this area, now we're overloaded, which means it's over 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So now here's the weird thing, your cell phone actually uses microwaves as well. But instead of using microwaves to heat things, it's using microwaves to transmit a signal. So microwave ovens use a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Now a cellular signal, depending on what network you have, can range from around 0.7 gigahertz to 2.1 gigahertz. And more specifically, if you're using Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi signal is in around 2.4 gigahertz. So almost the exact same frequency that you use in your microwave oven to heat things, you use as Wi-Fi on your phone. So now here's the question, can my microwave leak detector actually detect the Wi-Fi coming from my phone? And how high is the radiation coming from my phone? Well, let's check it out and test it. Okay, now let's try calling my wife. Hello? Let's see, we're getting up to 8.3 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Look at that. Hi, Joanna. I'm just measuring how much radiation you're giving me through a phone call. Is that okay? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, you're giving me 8.72 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Okay, so with just a phone call, I was able to pick up 8.72 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Now let's try just a Wi-Fi signal. So now let's just try using Hey Siri. <laughs> so just saying Hey Siri makes it go off the chart. Hey Siri. <laughs> You're giving me radiation. <laughs> You're gay, <kidding>. no. <laughs> okay, so that's a pretty surprising result. Just using the microwave leak detector, I can actually detect pretty high levels of microwave radiation coming from my phone when I just do a regular phone call, and also especially when I just use the Wi-Fi on my phone. When I use the Wi-Fi, it immediately went to overload as soon as I used it at all. And also, if you just set it on your phone, you can see it click up to an overload every once in a while, and that's when your phone is getting a push notification or something when it's using the internet connection. But before you go and throw away your cell phone, let's talk about what these numbers actually mean. Milliwatts per centimeter squared. And is this something to actually be concerned about? Now when measuring electromagnetic waves, you have to remember that the further you are away from the source, the weaker the signal it's going to be. So for example, if you're 20 inches away from the source, the strength of the electromagnetic waves will be 1 100th what they were if you were 2 inches away. So the federal standard for microwave ovens has to define a distance away from the source because if you just get really close to it, of course you're going to get a really strong signal. So for a microwave oven, they say that if you stay two inches away from the door of the oven, you shouldn't get over five milliwatts per centimeter squared of power going to your leak detector. <coughs> and for my microwave, that was about right. I didn't start getting over five milliwatts per centimeter squared until I got within two inches of the door. Now for my cell phone, I was directly on top of it. If I actually move it away from the cell phone, then I don't get within that range of five milliwatts per centimeter squared. So I, if I stay around two inches away, 
That information may or may not be comforting to you because if you remember, when you talk on your cell phone, you're sticking it right next to your head. So who cares about that two inches? You're sticking it right next to your head. So the way that microwaves heat your food is basically imagine that these are sugar molecules or water molecules and in your microwave oven you have microwave radiation and that just means that you have an alternating electrical signal going from positive negative positive negative and so basically because these molecules have positive and negative charges at either end of them what they do is as soon as the radiation goes by they flip back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and that vibrating of the molecules just causes them to heat up. So basically by putting food in the microwave oven, you're just heating it up. That's all microwave radiation does is heat things up. So let's assume an extreme example. Let's say that right next to our head we have 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared at all times. And also let's assume that our body can absorb every bit of radiation that's being emitted from the phone there. Well, in order to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius, it takes 4,200 millijoules of energy. That means at 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared, if I had one gram of water in that centimeter squared, it would take around 420 seconds to heat it up one degree Celsius. So that means talking on your cell phone for seven minutes at the maximum power that I measured here, that means you would heat up the water on, in your head by one degree Celsius in about seven minutes. But that would only be if your body didn't have any cooling system whatsoever. Now let's compare it to something that we're a little more used to heating us up, like the sun. So when we're out in the sun, the infrared radiation coming from the sun is around 52 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And that is actually covering every square centimeter of our body. So that means that just letting the sun hit your ear, your ear is heating up five times faster than just using a cell phone would do. In fact, you probably get more heating using a cell phone just by the battery heating up or the screen generating heat when you're using it as opposed to your body absorbing the microwave radiation coming off of the phone. And another thing to put your mind at ease, remember we were going to overload when I was using Siri? Well, let me show you something else that puts the microwave leak detector in overload. So to turn it on now, now watch this. <laughs> so all I'm doing is waving my shirt here and it's going into overload, which means it's getting over 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared of microwave radiation. So where were those microwaves coming from? Well, by waving my shirt, I actually have a little bit of static electricity on my shirt. And those tiny little micro sparks that are happening give off different frequencies of radiation and the microwave leak detector can pick up some of those in the microwave range. So if you're not scared of somebody waving their shirt by you, then you shouldn't be really scared of using your phone. <laughs> so the main concern that you should have when you're using the microwaves from your cell phone or the microwaves from your microwave oven is just heating your body up faster than you'd like to. So basically, as long as you don't feel too hot, you're fine. But do your phones really only give off microwaves, non-ionizing radiation? Well, I happen to also have a Geiger counter with me. So if you increase the frequency so much, what happens is the electromagnetic waves stop acting like waves altogether, but they start acting more like particles. And instead of flipping molecules back and forth, all that happens is they get hit by that particle of electromagnetic radiation and it breaks off a piece of the molecule. And if this molecule happens to be DNA, then it can cause cancer because a piece of the DNA just broke off and so it causes defects in the DNA. So microwaves are what are called non-ionizing radiation, meaning that the only thing it can do is vibrate things back and forth and heat them up. Whereas X-rays and gamma rays are ionizing radiation, which can break molecules and cause cancer. Okay, so first let's just get the background radiation in the room. Okay, so it looks like it's bouncing around between 0.09 microsieverts per hour and it got up to like 0.12 microsieverts per hour. So let's do the same thing again. Siri, are you secretly killing me with ionizing radiation? Mm, that's something I don't know. Okay, I don't see an increase in ionizing radiation while using the internet here one of my videos here and still no increase in the radiation 
So this means there's no ionizing radiation coming from your phone whatsoever. There you go, you're safe to keep using your cell phone. But let's be honest, how many of you out there would continue to use your cell phone even if I told you it was outputting deadly amounts of radiation? Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, please remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest videos out. And check out theactionlab.com to buy the new Action Lab subscription box. We have the vacuum chamber box for sale where you get a mini vacuum chamber. You can do similar experiments that you've seen me do on my channel with the vacuum chamber. And we also have the new box, which is the self-pouring liquid box. You get the same chemical that I use in my experiments to do my self-pouring liquid. That's the liquid where you start to pour it and as soon as it gets a little string out, it pulls the rest of the liquid out of the container, which is actually pretty cool to see in real life. If you wanna check out those boxes, head over to theactionlab.com. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.